Hey guys, Moses with Negron Tech here. So what's a PC a tech channel without having a video on how to build a PC? So I try to be brief with it, but here you guys go. Channels and uh, guides out there that really do do some such a better job. But if you want a very quick over brief of how to build a PC, check this out guys so for the motherboard you just take it out of the box you can take it out of the anti you know the anti-static bag you can build right on top of the box or on top of the bag now there's a different couple ways you can do this i like to just do it uh, the, the way where i'm just going to set it up the motherboard for so cpu ram and storage that m2 mvme i'm going to do all that once and then i'll put the motherboard into the case now in order to build a bc really all you need hopefully just a handy dandy screwdriver just a nice Phillips head will do. Now, general rule of thumb, when you install the M2 or MVME, you want to put it to the closest to the CPU. Now, CPUs have PCIe lanes, which dictate uh, certain M2s pretty much slots use different lanes or don't. It's just something to think about it, but that general rule of thumb where you want to install the M2 in the highest spot closest to the CPU is not always true and it always dictates up to you whether you want to do it or whether you don't. Just unscrew that heat shield and you're going to install that M2. Uh, this one's lucky enough where it actually comes with the easy tool where it just flips like that. But this one did come separately for the 2280 size MVME, so you are going to have to install this into the motherboard before putting that M2 in. So we're going to line up the grooves. Plug it in and use that little easy tool to keep this in place. You screw that heat shield back in, don't use too much force. So for the rim, we got this really nice G-Sco Flare X5 DDR5, 6000 megahertz a second speed. Now normally I just go A2 and B2 for the channels, but just refer to your motherboard manual for the primary recommended configuration. You're gonna hit these little notches here. Generally, A2 and B2 is going to be the furthest, closest to you from my direction from the camera, and you're just going to insert them. Next up is the CPU. You're going to take this little lever, get it out of that hook, release it, fold it, and you're going to bring the cover up. Now with the new, uh, either Intel or AMD with the new with the new AM5 sockets, just inspect the pins on the motherboard because for AM5 they are now on the motherboard. And make sure there's no bends or any disfigurations with that uh, socket right there. Uh, cognizant to note that there's a little triangle in that corner right there. The triangle in the CPU matches up with the triangle in the socket. For some reason, forget the triangle trick. You can always just orient that in English, you know, from left to right facing up. You line that up up with the direction of the motherboard. You're gonna see it. You're gonna hear. You're gonna feel it fall right in there. And now for one of my favorite parts, you can keep that off. You can keep uh, the black little cover off, or you can remove it. It's up to you. But I like to keep it on. You get that nice, sexy pop. And I didn't get it. So rest in peace. <laughs> now from here, you have two options. Uh, I do have an air cooling uh, CPU heatsink with the you know old school traditional no water cooling here, no uh, all in one, no AIO pump. So you can, you can install it in this way, or you can wait to do the motherboard into the case and then install it from there. It's personal preference. Um, some people find it easier to do it one way. Some people find it easier to do the other. It's up to you guys. So we have a traditional air cooler uh, heat sink right here. This one came with two fans. This is the Deep Cool AK620. For this mid-range build, it's gonna perform excellent on that 7700X. Just make sure when you do install it, you do remove this uh, piece of protective film or piece of plastic. You know, a lot of them come with different ones, and that's pretty much that. Um, you'll also see for this one specifically, the way it is set up, we are going to have to remove these fans just to have an easier installation. So, again, when it comes to, uh, you know, heat sinks and even AIOs, almost every one is installed differently. There really is no perfect guide to how to do one. So... I know it might be lazy to say, but you have to refer to the instructions for the installation when it comes to your CPU cooler, guys. One general rule of thumb is that when installing it, people do ask, oh, what direction do I install the heatsink? Well, it depends on the case, but majority of times you're gonna have a pull push configuration where the front of the case is gonna put a pull that air through the case, that nice, fresh, cool air through the case, and it's gonna get exhausted through the back. Now, general rule, the sexy side of the fan is pulling the air and then it exhausts the air through the back. 
So to keep consistent with the push-pull configuration, the air is going to come through, and we're going to make sure these the sexy part is facing front, so it pulls and exhausts through the back. I'm going to do a nice little P-shape. Remember, always remove. So this AK620 is real easy. We just make sure that we orient those fans correctly, get that nice consistent pull from the front, a consistent pull, and the screws over here go right on top of the sandoffs that we put on that bracket. Now for this, it's real easy. When you see right here, that little bracket that we install with the up facing screw, it secures right to that. You just do that to both sides. You can't mess it up. Just make sure before you, uh, when you full, do fully press down, it's secured to that little standoff right there. Now for the wiring to the fans for the CPU heatsink, this PWM fan header, Deepcool does does a nice job already pre-installing it so the wires are not showing. That's a nice little touch from Deep Deepcool. They get kudos for that. Uh, whenever I do install fans on a heatsink, I always put them on the bottom or on this far side right here, just so it gives a little bit cleaner look. Now with the heatsink installed, we're gonna attach this back in. These little plastic uh, grips, I don't really know what to call them. They just go right in the heatsink secure like that. Real simple and easy, guys. Real quick, guys, I know it's a lot of trash around here, but some general housekeeping rules. Whenever I build a PC, if I ever don't need parts, like all this extra fluff right here, I always just put it back into the box, because God forbid you need it for later, or let's say I go uh, transition into an Intel platform. At least I have everything, you know? Again, guys, uh, case disassembly is going to differ about what case, what brand you have. Normally, I only like to break down the cases as much as I need to, as we're going to have a CPU heatsink, air cooler. We don't need to remove the top bracket. We're not going to have any fans in the bottom intake. I did remove the uh, HD uh, cage here because there's going to be no uh, hard drives for him. And again, I don't mean to insult anybody's intelligence, but every case is different. So just refer to the manual of your case and your provider, manufacturer, to see how to break down these cases. Luckily, a lot of things are actually toolless. But again, if it's not, you get your handy dandy Phillips. Now here, guys, I do have the case on its back. And this is a very important step if you have an all-in-one cooler. You do have to do a little bit of research and see what order you're going to install things. Some motherboards, especially if you have an EATX motherboard, it might be difficult to install a top radiator with another three sets of fans. And for those people that want a top radiator with fans on top for the outtake, that push-pull on the top or on the front, for example, make sure you do have clearance within the case. Sometimes it's probably appropriate to install the radiator and the fans first. Sometimes it'll be appropriate for the motherboard. It's all depends guys it, there's a hundred ways to skin a cat and this is one of those things where you know you do have to do a little bit of legwork when it comes to researching how you're going to put together the case at this point for us it's going to be real simple we're just going to put that motherboard drop it right in one thing to note uh, a lot of people do get scared when they put the motherboard in guys your motherboard screws are going to come with the case not the actual motherboard so for these standoffs for these standoffs the screws actually come with the case box not the motherboard box. Now, if it doesn't come with the pre-installed ion shield on your motherboard, you're just gonna install it from the inside of the case and the nice sexy part is gonna face out. Now, when you install that ion shield, put a little bit of pressure. You're gonna hear some nice audible clicks to know it's secure. And that's it. Then you're gonna realign the motherboard onto those standoffs and into that nice ion shield. And then from here, you just screw in all those sandal spots. Yeah, so for our CPU heatsink, we're gonna plug it into the CPU fan. There's also the CPU op. We're gonna use the second fan of our CPU heatsink and connect it there. Now, a lot of motherboards won't even start if the CPU fan is not connected, but it get, again, it depends on the motherboard. 99% of the time, the motherboard's gonna recommend that it connects uh, here. The AIO for the pump fan, you can put that there. It's always gonna run at max. Uh, Maximally. Now another thing to note when it comes to uh, your system fan headers, uh, there's a there's an amp rating, right? That DC 12 volt uh, 0 0.50. Most motherboard system fan headers are averaged out. I think at one amp. Now it is different. Like my last my uh, Gigabyte V550, I think it was a uh, two amps per header. But just make sure you don't over you don't overpower that system header. If it's one amp, then make sure you don't do. In this example, don't use uh, more than two. Now for these front panel connectors, you got the AC audio for the the audio ports in the front that'll normally be in the bottom left of your motherboard you have your front panel connector for your front panel connections um 
This case is very nice because it's already set up. A lot of the Lee & products do it. I know two USB, USB-C and USB 2.0 header here. Oh, well, connectors here for the headers up front. So the thing about the front panel connector is that you can't mess it up. And the same thing with HD Audio, do not get them mixed up. They have different, uh, they have different spots where there is no pin. So you can't mess it up. The, the text is going to face up. Now I'm gonna show you one more thing and that's gonna be the front panel connector. If it's not set up, just refer to the motherboard manual. Uh, we're all visual learners, so it's probably easier to just look at a picture. So up until this part, everything has been relatively simple, right? Not too hard. Now I know whenever people do build or, or uh, build a PC and they ask me questions, they go to the power supply box and they look at all this and they're like, holy crap, where do I plug it? There's so many cables here. Don't stress, gonna explain it in real simple terms. All right, so all you need to start with is these three core cables. You have your 24 pin for the motherboard. Now, this is the exception. The split part is actually gonna go into the PSU and this one, you cannot mess it up. You can only insert it one way into the motherboard. Next up, you need cables to power your graphics card. So you're gonna have your six plus two or your eight pin cables right here. Uh, in EVGA's case, it just says, actually it doesn't say, it just says EVGA, but the other ones for the CPU will say CPU, but you have your six plus two and this split is gonna go into the GPU. Now the reason why this six plus two goes to the GPU side is one, because you can't mess it up, and two, some uh, older GPUs and some models only use six pins, some use eight. There you go. So now you have one more, you have your uh, four plus four, your other eight pin from the CPU, and that, like the GPU, goes the split side goes into the motherboard, the split side, because sometimes you only have a four pin in that top left corner. Sometimes you have two eight, sometimes you have an eight and a four, but that's why it's set up this way. And again, you can't mess it up. So there's that. These three is all you need to run the computer, guys. That's it. Power the motherboard, power uh, you know, the, the CPU, that top left corner, and then you power your GPU and then you're set. Now, for peripherals, if you have SATA and stuff like that, Guys, don't get too confused if you don't have any hard drives, if you don't have any like RGB controllers, stuff like that, or anything else that might be SATA powered, you don't need it. All this uh, fluff, extra cables, you just don't need, guys. And depending on that GPU and the CPU, you might need one, two, or three, but it's all dependent on what motherboard and what GPU you have. Real simple, guys. So it's personal preference, but what I like to do is I like to make all the connections uh, inside that make the connections to the PSU and then with the cables already attached then I like to put it into the case you don't have to do it that way you could do uh, install the PSU secure it with the screws and then you can uh, put the cables in but I don't like doing that personally for the motherboard we get that split connection for the CPU we have a straight up 8 pin no split the split goes to the motherboard for the CPU EVGA marks them and the, the straight up eight pin, not the split, goes inside the PSU. You can't mess it up. And for the G, uh, GPU cables, they're gonna go in the VGA one, two, and three if you need. And again, the straight up eight pin goes to uh, the actual power supply. You can't mess it up. And that's it guys, since we need two eight pins for the GPU, we need two uh, eight pins for the CPU and our motherboard, we only need one. That's it, we're all done with the power supply. Uh, you'll only need the SATAs, again, if you have some peripherals, some RGB controllers that need to be powered by that, or some hard drives or SSDs that are not NVMe. So for the PSU installation, if you guys notice closely, some of these screw holes are actually offset. So that is the orientation into where you're going to mount the PSU. That's pretty much it, you can't mess it up. Now, this isn't always the case, but for normally these ATX motherboard, um, these ATX cases, this is how it is, ITX cases are a different animal, I'm not gonna get into it. So as you can see, those screws are gonna only line up one way, so that's how you install it. Not too hard, guys. So at this point, with the PSU installed and all the cables set up, I don't do cable management yet, but I just like to route these, and obviously with this case, the 216 has nice channels, so we have uh, the ability to do a little bit of cable management while we route these to the front of the case and get that set up. Now, while I route these, I do like to stay somewhat organized. So for the PSU cables, I'll have them velcro together, not zip tied. Um, I'm very careful with zip ties. Uh, they're a little bit overused. They do look beautiful if you make everything tight. But I like to keep things a little bit loose because, you know, if I ever have to work or place parts, it's a pain to get like a small pair of scissors in there and start cutting all those zip ties. So I like to organize it so my PSU cables will be together. Things for the fans, the front panel cables I'll keep separate, things like that will be uh, organized in that way in that manner 
So you'll see, uh, you know, as I'm rounding these cables to the front, I just like to uh, use those channels that are provided. As you can see for the CPU ones, we'll just use these over here and then go right through that front corner. Now for the CPU cable, you see we don't have a lot of real estate there to actually make those connections. So there's no reason to work harder than you need to. Just take a couple seconds, remove that top bracket, and now you have all, now all the space in the world to make those connections nice and easy. Work smart, hard. Work smart, not hard, guys. All right, so with all the actual vital connections made, next up, we gotta power those fans. So the Lee and Lee 216 comes with the integrated fan hub, which is excellent. Now, every fan, if it's not ARGB or RGB, it's just gonna have a four pin uh, PWM fan header. Now, you'll see we have three here. All fans here, except for the rear one, are AGB. So we have two, AR two uh, ARGB, no RGB in the back. So this back one just has a PWM. The front ones have a PWN, and then I already know this, but it has the ARGB splitter. They're getting the ARGB power by this uh, three volt, five pin right here. Well, the three pin, five volt right here. The PWM power is here for all three. And then the only thing we actually need to do is now power this fan hub. All our fans are being powered by the integrated fan hub with Lee and Lee. We're not adding any additional fans, so we don't have to make more connections there. We're gonna funnel this through. That's a bit. So now all we gotta do is power that uh, Lee and Lee fan hub. We'll do that to the motherboard. And you wanna use a system fan header, that way you can actually control the RPMs of all the fans that are installed. And the last part for the fan hub, we now have got to power it by SATA. So we're going to add one SATA peripheral connection from the power supply, make this connection here, and we're done, guys. After that, we install the GPU, connect those uh, eight pins, and we're set. So now that that SATA connection is done with the Lee and Lee fan hub, we're all set, guys. That's it. And you'll see as, you know, I go through the build here, it's so easy to cable management. I really, really didn't do anything. I just used the provided channels, and you see how, you know, the case in the back, it just has such a nice, clean look. And again, it is easy to do this because there's not a lot of proprietary connections, stuff like that, anything else that requires SATA. But uh, that's it, guys. Next up, GPU, and we're done. Yeah, so I actually did make a mistake. If this needs uh, three 8-pin connections, I thought the 4070 Ti only needed two. My mistake. But no big deal. I just added another one. Now, uh, in my personal experience, I've never had a problem using one uh, PSU cable and using that little pigtail right here. I know it's hard to see, but using that pigtail as a second connection, it's not recommended to do that. Um, but I have encountered some users that have issues trying to use that pigtail. So what I always say, just use three, if you have three, six, three, eight pins, use three separate, uh, P, you know, use three separate uh, PCIe cables. That's it, guys. Now for these little shrouds right here, it depends on the GPU, but you're going to have to remove some. Just unscrew them. That's it. So we're going to take this uh, cover for the connection off. We're gonna hit this little uh, lever right here, open that, you'll hear that click, and then you just install it. Now we do wanna do one of the, up, uh, the top most lane closest to the CPU, that way we can use all 16 uh, PCIe slots. Use those, uh, well, use those lanes technically. Get it in there nice and snug, and you're gonna hear that audible click once you insert it. From there, you're gonna reinsert the screws to secure the GPU. Yeah, so the biggest part with these 40 series cards, this 16 pin, this 12 plus four pin, we're gonna insert it. Make sure you do not insert it at an angle. Whoop, upside down. Nice and straight. Now, listen closely, you should hear an audible click. You hear that little click and you press nice and in there. And that's it guys, from there you make the three uh, connections to the eight pins and you're set. Now with the GPU installed, that's it guys, we're all done. This is pretty much the finished build. At this point, I don't put the front or back panel on. Uh, you know, I, in my experience, there's always some, some type of troubleshooting I have to do when it comes to uh, building a PC. So I'm gonna go get this set up, connect it, get the power on, see if there's anything wrong, set up windows, stuff like that. and. Uh, Try to make this as easy as possible for my friend. Uh, I'll get back to you guys in a bit. All right, guys. So that's like a quick rundown of the hardware installation on uh, how to build a PC. I try to go over as much uh, detail as I can. But so for the actual software installation, you insert your installation media uh, for DDR5 specifically. Just give it time. It takes a time for the memory to time and actually boot, especially for AMD. Uh, another recommendation, I don't normally mess with BIOS until after Windows is installed and copied onto the system from that installation media, then after I get everything, uh, my Windows update, drivers installed, stuff like that, then I get it going. If you guys have any questions or concerns, uh, 
hey, just let me know and uh, hope, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. And uh, if you don't mind, if you enjoy the content, you know, like, subscribe, do all that good stuff. And uh, Moza with Negron Tech here, guys. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.